So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're very excited to welcome Miles Pilling, who's come to talk to us about assistive technology, which is a topic that's highly in demand. We often get emails uh, about this and in the support group, many people want to talk about different options they have. So just a little bit about Miles. Um, he is an ICT and SEM specialist, ICT being information communication technology specialist and consultant with over 30 years of experience in the education sector. He's worked for a local authority as an ICT SEN advisor for 10 years and now runs his own assessment consultancy and training company called Accessibility Solutions. Miles works mainly in the education sector with crossovers to other sectors such as adult services for people and learning disability. And finally, Miles is a council member for BATA, a part-time external lecturer for Bath Spa University on the MA Dyslexia course and Ascend Consultant for Tablet Academy. Um, so thank you so much for being with us today, Miles. It sounds like you do a lot and you're definitely an expert in this area. And we look forward to hearing your talk today. So um, I will uh, just to, before you start, let everybody know that what we're going to do is Miles is going to give the presentation today, probably around 40 minutes. And then we will have Q and a Q&A session, which Nuno will chair. If you have a Q&A Q &A to add, if you just add it as you think of it in the chat box there. Also to let you know that this will be recorded and will be added up onto our website. And you will receive an email in the next few days, which points you to the recording. So that if you don't pick everything up, you can go back and watch it. Or if you haven't been able to join us today, you'll be able to watch it as well. So. Um, I'd just like to introduce Nuno as well, who is um, the operations manager at the Dyslexia Association of London, and he's the one that's put this together. So I'd like to say thank you to Nuno for making this happen. And now I will pass you across to Miles. So thank you very much. That's OK. Thank you. Good to meet you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen and um, hide this at the top. There we go. So hopefully you can see my presentation. Um, and yeah, hi, my name's Miles Pilling, as I've said, and I'm an assistive technologist. That is something that's not always commonly known. Um, I've worked in education as a special schools teacher and then developed this new terminology uh, with uh, assistive technology, which is to actually enable people to overcome their learning disabilities, their physical disabilities and all kinds of disabilities. Currently, I am working with a company called Dyslexia Box on access to work on a freelance basis. Uh, but I'm also engaged in a really exciting project with Barter, uh, which is a series of three videos, which we're aiming to produce in the next month called the power of assistive technology or the power of AT. I've been asked to give an insight into the use of assistive technology and its use with dyslexia. I'm also speaking at the dyslexia show this year and did so last year. AT can help dyslexia users by providing cues and finding the correct words and whether that is visual or auditory. It, it works in both areas. For many dyslexic users, the difficulty of decoding and encoding words is something that presents a barrier to everyday life. By using AT, some of these barriers can be lessened or removed. Text-to-speech and word prediction being one of them. Correct spelling through accurate speech recognition is, is another. In this session, we'll be looking at what makes a difference to people's lives. These are the aims of the session. And so what I want to do by the end of this time is to give you some examples of current technologies and also to give you some background into how we've arrived at the place we're at at the moment here in the UK in 2023. There are numerous things that 
have contributed to that. And I just want to start with uh, a short history of what those are. It won't take too long. The British Assistive Technology Association was formed in the 1990s by a gentleman called Martin Littler, who ran a company called Inclusive Technology. Subsequently, Martin developed this one-stop shop to find the technology that people needed. I used it myself as a professional, and I'm pleased to say that that company achieved uh, industry awards for their work both here in the UK and abroad and their groundbreaking work elsewhere. We, by the end of the 1990s, we were world leaders in the area of assistive technology in the UK. And to show that the um, premier education show was the British Assist uh, the BET show, which takes place in London and uh, it's due to happen this year in March. Now it's worldwide attracting um, all over the world global educators. So my background being education, this is the foremost about it. In the noughties, uh, Barter represents a hundred suppliers and DSA and access to work assessors and other professionals from therapists to teachers to government. And our main mission, which is still relevant today, is raise the awareness of assistive technology in the UK because people still don't know, after all these years, what technology can do. And uh, that's the main reason that we want to promote the use of assistive technology. That's why I'm passionate about it. So let's have a look at the kind of things that are going on in the field of education and work in terms of how that um, assistive tech works. We're truly a broad church of disciplines seeking to interface with government and the two grants that exist is the Disability Student Allowance for Education and the Access to Work Allowance. These are all um, completely uh, non-refundable grants um, available to those who provide evidence of their disabilities. So what does AT offer in terms of teaching and learning, recording and organization? The ability to replay stuff is so important for dyslexic users to have the ability to actually play that again. Uh, the pace of delivery in all settings is very much uh, a, a problem to dyslexic users. I'm not dyslexic myself, so I'm talking about people I've talked to about it. And we have found these tools actually help in that. Also, organization is part of the difficulty that you have and having everything in one place in the cloud is a huge advantage in that you never lose anything. And uh, that, that is something that many children struggle with, both with dyslexia and without dyslexia. In terms of the workplace, the productivity tools is the preferred term that we use rather than assistive tech. So that increases the person's ability to do their job. And in many ways, it's overcoming barriers to their achievements. So it's, it, it's, it's enabling people to do what they want to do. But again, the knowledge of this, particularly by IT departments, IT teams in all settings is really poor. Um, there isn't a kind of understanding of what's currently out there or how systems and uh, the profiles and the policies, the resistance have to be adapted to allow assistive technology to work and function properly. So let's look at the areas of need that assistive technology do. And in that, we have these sections. It helps people of all disabilities, but in particularly, it helps those with physical disabilities, such as cerebral palsy through specialized inputs as if your hand or body doesn't particularly work well, you can use switches. Or even if your hands don't work, you can use an eye gaze system, which responds to you looking at the screen and that acts as the mouse using the technology that reads your eyes. Then there is a huge area called AAC or communication disabilities, 
This could involve people with this range of disabilities listed here. And so we have something called VOCUS. That stands for Voice Output Communication Aid. Dynamic displays. If you send the um, uh, lost voice guy, you realize that he is using a type of VOCA. It's actually an iPad with an adaptive software in it. And that brings me on to something too. Um, traditionally, these tools were kind of really specialized, cost a great deal of money, and it made them look different. Now you can use a device that everybody has, and it's just adapted to suit your needs. Then we move on to the more complex needs, such as brain injury, medical conditions, artificial intelligence methods, and those are extremely important. And so we've got um, particularly um, devices now that are actually reading your brain waves and converting your thoughts into actions, text and communication. We're going to see more of that and with the development of artificial intelligence. And then, of course, the sensory impairments, sight loss, hearing loss, and therefore magnification of your device or screen readers that are used to uh, enable this to work and even captioning. So those kinds of things are areas of need across the whole spectrum of how assistive technology is very much pervasive. But let's move on to specific tools that really make a difference for the dyslexic. I'm going to refer to um, software here and actually come out of the presentation to demonstrate some of this. But I just want to explain a few things first before we do that. And uh, the first tool is Clicker 8. This is used in education. It provides all the tools necessary for not only dyslexic users, but also those with different kinds of impairments, as all the input aspects are covered. Um, text help read and write, or just called read and write, is more of the grown up type of tools that exist. And you can see the range of helpful tools that are on here. And I would like to just demonstrate some of that before you in a minute. And then there are apps. We're gonna look at apps towards the end, um, but there are lists there that I can recommend that could be very helpful for you as a dyslexic person. But there have been seismic changes in what we would call mainstream software. And this applies to tools that are used in the workplace, such as Microsoft 365. For instance, and this will be demonstrated, we have uh, text-to-speech in Immersive Reader and speech-to-text through the input through Dictate. Um, I have to say that, uh, that, that these tools are built in now, so there is no additional cost and this is a good strategy to introduce people to technology. And also it's a benefit. Maybe some of you are using these tools, but often enough, people are not told about it. So if you don't know what you don't know, Read Aloud is a very useful addition, which exists both in um, the Microsoft 365 family and also in the browser, The Edge which incorporates a range of new technologies uh, from changing whole websites into different languages to the read aloud that allows you to have any part of that website read to you. And although you might be reading very much, I spend a lot of time with people with dyslexia uh, who are adults and working in quite high powered jobs, they find the ability to have text to speech allows them to relax and to just focus on the flow of content. So it's not just about having everything read, it's about seeing how that reading actually works. So let's, let's change over now and have a look at some of these tools. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop the presentation for a minute and I will go back in and we will have a look at, um, at the screen without the presentation. That's better, okay. So text help read and write. Um, 
you will find it, list, um, it you will have to pay for this this is a, a paid material and uh, it's it's it works as subscription but mainly your company or other people can allow that to, to take place and you can have that um, put on your machines in your workplace as well so sorry about this should have got this up and running shouldn't i okay so text help is a suite of tools that you can use across the whole of your system and it basically provides a range of different things that can help you so i'm going to call up microsoft word here we'll have this running i want to mention a few things about it as well you'll notice first of all that i have this in a dark theme uh, for visual impairment this is really quite useful uh, you can you can actually set it up in your system and it will it will enable you to have clearer text to background um, in this so with um, this tool i'm just going to pull it down a little bit so that we can see the toolbar here and increase the font size so we can have it a little bit bigger so you can see so let's look at some of the things that the prediction can do. That's this little toolbar here. And I'm just going to click on that. And at the moment, there's nothing up there. But prediction is one way that you can bypass the auditory difficulties of trying to build words. I found that a lot of pupils that I've worked with, if they could see the word, they could get it. But to try and get them to actually spell it out and listen to the sounds to build that word it was increasingly difficult to to do so often it's the small words that catch you up and there is a little tool to help with that that um, that you can find out in text help which is called similar word checker and that allows you to find those things now i'm not going to go through all of the tools on this package that's really a session in itself it's just to show you some of the most important bits. So um, let's try and write something here. And as you can see, as I start to type, words are appearing down the left hand side of the screen. I can hear it spoken to me. I don't know if you can hear that, but um, it is actually speaking. And I can also uh, begin to build. Um, different kinds of words and word prediction isn't just for dyslexics it's for everyone so although if you're a dyslexic it's useful and essential for you but for the rest of the world it's useful for all maybe you use a tool called Grammarly which increases your capacity to have um, a word spelled correctly and uh, it's a tool I use myself because I sometimes get into a mix of grammar. So it, Grammarly is useful for that. And so it's, it's a good tool that way. So I want to write the word important. So let's see how far down the line it goes. First letter, because it knows the and important are close to each other. And so it's guessed that. So that's F7, so I can press. On F7, it puts the word in. The important part, so I'm just going to write this. And this time I'm going to click on it. Part of. of I won't bother with that because I don't need to. This talk, I don't need to spell that. Talk, I could probably work out as well. Is that. It speaks my language. Okay, fairly nonsense says center, but you could see language was appearing there. Um, I really thought about this. So what I can do is check it now for a similar word checker. So I'm going to cut out the word prediction and start with a similar word. And it begins to suggest whether this is a good word to use or not. And I'm, I've got it set to actual, um, basically I've got it set to all words. 
And as you can see, it's, um, it's picking out every single word. Um, I, I don't think I want to use the word underneath there. Uh, that's not going to help us at all, <laughs> as you can see. Um, so it's not part of that. But I'm going to stick with important. So I can go through and just tick the areas that are useful to me. It's ones that it's picked up and it's done that. I can have that read back to me and the important part about text to speech, which you will see also in Word itself, is that it plays it back. And the important part of this talk is that it speaks my language. Uh, played again. The important part of this talk is that it speaks my language. And it will highlight the words as they're spoken. Now, I've had students who have used word prediction technique um, and they have begun to say, I don't need to use that anymore because I'm spelling better. So one sideline to word prediction, if you've never used it, is that it actually improves your spelling because it's actually training you to use the words that you want to use. Now, if you're a child and you struggle with particular um, understanding of a word, for instance, talk, there is a picture dictionary which gives you an icon that you can have to explain those words. And just to show it doesn't just deal with uh, short words, um, that particular picture dictionary will incorporate different languages. So you can see it. So it's another tool to help with understanding. Now I want to switch to Word and just look at some of the things that Word can do. So I'm going to close down um, that. And I'm going to switch to um, dictate. Now, uh, this is Microsoft Office 365. Um, it also exists on Office 2016 and 2019. Earlier versions won't have this. So that's what you need to know. Um, there was a program called Word Talk from the call center in Edinburgh, which would interface and do a similar thing uh, particularly with text to speech um, for Word, and that's in the in the old days. So, uh, as somebody said, never work with children, animals, and technology. So this could go horribly wrong. I hope it's not. And one other thing to say about Dictate is it runs on the internet. So basically, it needs Wi-Fi. It needs that in order to work. And so I'm just going to click on the Dictate button. Now I can begin to speak with my voice, full stop. This will allow me to be 50% faster than typing, full stop. Train me to speak in full short sentences, full stop. And it will also enable me to spell accurately. Full stop. Now, as you can see, I stuttered over train and it's produced a, a total nonsense word, which word has picked up. So I will, I will change that. Um, it's not a full program like Dragon Dictate, which is the, the bee's knees. And so I'm just manually training that. OK, so it's pretty impressive, isn't it? So that isn't read write. This is just Microsoft Office. And the converse to this, we just done speech to text, is the converse is to actually have text to speech. And this you can find on the review menu in an option called read aloud. And sometimes it's called immersive reader. Immersive reader is more used in schools because it presents a clear background for people to access. So if I just click read aloud. The important part of this talk is that it speaks my language. Now I can begin to speak with my voice. This will allow me to be 50% faster than typing. Train speaking for short sentences. And it will also enable me to spell accurately. So that, that shows you the power of just simple little tools. Just doing that could change your life. 
in order for you to show what you can do and not what you can't do. So I'm going to go back into my presentation now. And Nuno, of, uh, if you could just tell me if you can see uh, the screen, that would be helpful. Just going to start from the current slide again. Can you see that, yeah. Nuno? If you yeah, just can, tell me. You can see it. Miles. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Excellent. Good. Okay, so the next tool in our arsenal is one called Glean. Now, Glean is a relatively new product and it came out a couple of years ago. What does Glean do? Well, I'll tell you and then I'll play you a little video. Um, I'll just put it onto that screen. So Glean is a note-taking software. Now, when I was at school, I never was taught how to take notes. And as I've been in schools nearly all my life, I don't think anybody teaches you how to take notes. Or if you have, I do stand corrected, okay? But it's certainly something that um, is difficult, especially if your attention varies. Um, so this is a tool that works online with an extremely simple interface and allows you to have any talk converted into a listening mode so that you can play it back again. And it's great for organizing and it's great for listing. So what you'll find, and it's very brief on this video, you might want to play it back when you get the presentation, um, is that it color codes specific things that you're listening to. So in effect, it's encouraging you to actively listen to pick out the most important bits and it will just help you to pull back information in a form that, that can be understood and played back again. So here's my little video. I'm sorry about the promotion bit. I'm not here to sell Glean. I don't have any shares of the company and I have no axe to grind. As I usually say to people, I am totally um, software and operating system agnostic. I, I don't, I just use what works. And so um, this and, and there has been great results. Obviously it's designed for university students and for secondary pupils but it could also have an application in the workplace for you personally, particularly with the mobile on the go, to actually be able to have an audio playback and assign meanings. Yes, there are costs. So um, do go to glean.io and uh, it will find, you will find things there about Glean if you want to know more about that. 
And then this may interest some of you because um, things that people prefer to use their handwriting perhaps. And so there are various options for this. Um, the, the one that's new on the market is Remarkable 2. And it's almost like a, um, uh, 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 an Amazon Fire with, with a pen. And so it's like electronic paper that you can use and then rub out again. The precursor to all of this was the Echo Light Scribe pen, which is the one in the middle here. And uh, it basically records an audio as you write. Um, difficult to demonstrate because you're talking as you're trying to write, but it works on particularly um, set papers that will actually uh, enable you to have that. It's a smart paper, if you like. And then they have, but can you see the price? £104. It's quite expensive. The Remarkable, I don't know how much that costs, but I imagine it's 100 or two. And then the cheapest on the market, which you might want to investigate, is Rocketbook. This converts your handwriting into text. And that is a bit of a holy grail. Again, it uses smart, smart book and an app to transfer. And so there's a little bit of processing to do. That means making, going through a set of instructions, but not huge and doable. And that's only 20 quid. It's an absolute steal. But one of the biggest problems, even though I can copy text from textbooks, to actually copy my own handwriting and have it transferred into text is really important for a lot of settings. So that's that's what that's why that's there. In order for us to do all of these things, we're going to need to have people who understand the technology and can maximize it in us. And one-to-one -one training is so vital in this area because if I've met one dyslexic, I have met one dyslexic. There are hundreds of different types of you out there and you all have different preferences for different tools. And a plea, we need funding, uh, particularly in organizations, in schools, but also in the workplace to enable these specialist tools to be sourced, particularly uh, things like Texthelp or other tools, or, or just to raise the awareness uh, because I mentioned you don't know what you don't know. And so assistive technology is a bit like a Cinderella situation, offering so much but not able to deliver when the information and access to it is limited. And of course, there is stigma. People feel their dys dys dyslexia greatly. We talk about dyslexic advantage, but if you're honest, many of you, although it's brilliant, that you think differently and you're creative and you do lots of things that can really, um, you know, just think outside the box. Um, a lot of you feel embarrassed about it, even into middle age. I appreciate too, that there needs to be more understanding of this disability in society. Maybe assistive technology can help remove those things. That's what I think. So let me go back again to that slide about apps, because I would like to just show you some apps. These are the apps that I'm thinking about. And mind mapping, I will just mention, mind mapping is something that um, is truly useful for organization, for pulling things together. And inspiration is one um, particular product. And it can be an app, it can be on your PC, it's multi-platform and did get lost for a little bit because uh, the company folded that made it. And then uh, it's been re-energized into Inspiration 10. And that's that's really uh, brought it back on stream. But there are others, MindMeister, MindView. These are other tools that work in this area. And of course, we just looked at Glean. Um, so let me now bring on board my um, device, my iPad. So I might have to reset it. So give me one second while I come out of this and do a little bit of playing around with it so that I can call it on board. 
One second, I will just load this up and then it will be working with us on here. And we can have a look at some of these apps. It'll just take a few moments as I connect. And before you ask, yes, I did have this connected up uh, before we started, but I think it just timed out. So I had to do it again. All right, as soon as it comes back on the screen, I'll reshare and we'll be back in. Right, okay. Let's pull that down. Let's go back to the share. Nearly there, here we go, right on. Oh, what I always forget when I'm doing demonstrations, I try to use the mouse to control the iPad. Just think about that, it's not going to work, is it? So let's look at the first one, which, um, you, you, which is um, Clara Scan Pen, which is this one here, right? This is such a clever little app and you can use it on your mobile phone. I'm just demonstrating it on a um, on an iPad and costs about eight ninety nine, uh, worth every penny. What does it do? It converts any text that you've got in front of you into editable text to use, and also it will speak to you. Actually, it won't do the editable text; it will just speak to you. Sorry, Clara Speak Plus is the one that does that. So I'm just going to take some text from my script here, and you'll see it in real time, what it can do. So OCR, which is what this is, tends to like larger fonts, but I'm just gonna take it here at face value, and we'll just take that slide. And it, what I've done is I've taken a photograph, but if this works as it should do, this will speak back to you. They are the methods by which we need to deliver the training and also the finance to fund it. Great, we have DSA and access to work, but how do adults with dyslexia get the tools they need? I think it's the lack of access to knowledge that makes assistive technology a bit of a Cinderella situation. Offering. So you can see how it works. It works on any text. So, you know, you've got an earpiece or something, you just need to have that decoded. Maybe it's a whole wadge of a page of things. This is brilliant for that. And it's so simple. And all I'm doing is stroking or pulling down with my finger the areas I'm going to read. One one training in assistive technology to maximize TS use funding to enable specialist tools to be earth awareness raising. You don't know what you don't know. Remove barriers to people with disabilities. So that's Clara Speak, which is a really um, brilliant little tool. Um, the converse, which is OCR, which is Clara Speak. Now Clara Speak um, is a tool that actually um, just uh, basically allows that conversion but all into text, but it also has word prediction. So as I type across the top, this. you will see word predictions appearing at the bottom. Is my now I'm looking for the word work, which it hasn't found, and there it is. So I could work. Just, so I've got picture support, text support, and sound support. It also converts to lots of different formats. You can save it as an audio file, but you can also export it in these ways and uh, and what it can do it can do literally what you were seeing there a minute ago but i'm going to do what's called a scan from camera and watch what happens so i can take a picture or if it's not quite right take it again i'm not sure this is going to work it will scan it and bring it in. Okay, there's quite a few mistakes there because it was a bit wobbly, because my hands are wobbly. But you can see um, that we're getting there. This at the moment is about 70% correct on this particular scan. 
if I went in and scanned and coming closer to a particular text, making it larger, I think you will see a difference. And that's how this technology will work. So now that's scanning and pulling it in as well. So yeah, there's, there's lots of tools that can do that kind of work. Now, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Word uh, because I think there's this can be a very useful tool in combination with several other tools. One of which is, is um, a tool that's in the settings here that maybe you know, no, don't know about, um, but certainly there are lots of tools that you can use making use of the keyboard here. And one of the benefits that have happened on uh, Microsoft I'm oh, sorry, on the iPad, is that the microphone used to be dependent on Wi-Fi, but now isn't. So what I'm going to do, I can't do this live to show you, because if I cut the Wi-Fi, I stop the content. <laughs> okay, it, it's, it's a, a limitation of demonstration. But I will go in here and just show uh, two aspects of it, which is um, using the keyboard voice input with read aloud in Word, which is really useful and powerful. Hopefully, I think I might just cancel that one and try a different document there. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay, so I've got an invoice here. Didn't really particularly want it in invoice, um, but let's just use this at the top. So I'm gonna show the keyboard so that you can see it. And you'll notice at the bottom of the keyboard, there's a little microphone. I'm sure you all have used this, but for you as adults or even you as children, it's very accurate. So I will begin to write something with my voice. So this will interpret what I've got here and put it into Word directly and full stop. I didn't want to put a full stop there, but never mind. Let's carry on. It has been a joy and a privilege to show you all this technology. And to stop it, I press the button. Okay, so that stopped it now. Now I want to hear that read back to me. So hidden, if you like, because review doesn't show it like on an, uh, a PC. But if I click next to it, there is the option there of read aloud. So I'm just going to put the cursor at the beginning so that when I press read aloud, it will read back to us. or not as the case may be. <laughs> Perhaps it doesn't like it in that area. Let me try this bit here. Let's see if it'll do better on this one. I find that rather strange because it, it does work. To choose what voice you hear while using Read Aligned, sign into your account. That's what I've not done. I've not Invoice to Dyslexia Box Limited, Future Business Park, King's Hedge Road. Okay. So you can see that it does work. I'm so sorry that it didn't right at the beginning there. Um, my apologies for that. So that's Word. So there's lots of really excellent tools out there that you can use to enable you to get the best out of your technology. I will just finish as we're coming up to that time with just my details. Um, and let's start from there. Get rid of that and that. So there's my details if you want them and please feel free to contact me on Twitter, email or website. Thank you for listening. I will hand back now for questions or anything that anybody wants to 
uh, say to us about this. So I'll stop share now. Okay, over to Nuno and the questions. Thank you so much, Miles. That was a really, really good presentation. It's very inspiring and insightful. So thank you for that. We were sort of 10 minutes to um, the scheduled time, but uh, we were talking earlier and we were happy to extend the Q&A for a few more minutes, if that's okay with you, Miles, and if that's okay with the participants. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, just send them over and then we'll go through them as they arrive and we'll get Miles to um, answer as many as we can within the time. So you can fire away. Thank you. I think Danny had a question. Did he? Um... Danny did have a question. Yes. Uh, let me bring that up. So I'll have to. Yeah. So actually, yeah, I forgot because it was so early on. <laughs> Apologies, Danny. So yeah, so Danny is asking. Can you, when you misspeak or stutter over a word, go back and re-speak in that section? Yeah, um, depends, of course. You can do it in both ways, but it's a manual method. If you are using Dragon speech recognition, it would, um, you could say, select misspelled word and it will go back and change it. There are some limited editing functions. You might like to try it in uh, Dictate in Word. Um, but it's very limited and um, really if you need much better editing you need to go that way um, but yes you can alter anything in any text that you're producing on a word processor or in any note or any other form um, but if you want to do it efficiently with your voice then you have to pay the bucks for Dragon speech recognition to have the Rolls Royce of editing and tools but yeah Pays your money, you takes your choice. Thanks, Miles. Um, we've got a couple more questions coming in. Um, for so there is a question from uh, an anonymous attendee. I know you've already answered it, Philip, but, but just for um, the people that also might be wondering uh, if. Will Miles be sharing his slides after the meeting? Yes, we will oh, be course. sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I hope you save the chat with this, Nuno, because you've put in loads of links, which yeah. is great too. Yeah, we will we'll be saving the chat as well. So um, and I, we appreciate all of those who've contributed to those links as well. So that's definitely uh, really good resources for everybody. There's a great question in here from, I uh, just noticed, from Irene Ning, and uh, she wants to know where she could get training in this. Okay, well, um, there, there are several groups. Learning Labs, uh, I haven't got a web address for them just at the moment. Um, they have produce a series of videos that you can watch. Um, also, uh, there is Wyvern um, Business Systems who produce a set of videos in their iView series, and you can find out about all these kind of things. Um, if you want support and help while you're back at school, I can recommend Find My Flow, um, which actually has those videos, but also helpful little videos that guide you in how to study, how to do this, and it paces you, preparation, organization. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll certainly put in a, um, a note if, if you uh, you know for those particular items learning labs wyvern business systems and uh, iview sorry find my flow <laughs> um so we have a question from uh, richard ludlow as well um let me see if i can interpret this the right way you mentioned good to have one to one is this something, Miles, you do to work out what it is that we specifically need or the best technology you specifically need? Yeah, let me give you a case example. Um, um, basically, in conjunction with um, the trainee, we generally work out what 
particular tools using my expertise of what they want to do and knowledge of the technology. And often they get a package, which is a bundle, uh, like Textile, where all of that is there. And really, I call it cherry picking because we try and work out exactly which bits of that are useful and which is not. And it's surprising. For instance, one gentleman used the PDF reader because that is very important because he reads lots of documents in PDF format and he just finds it really helpful to have it read to him rather than having to go through and concentrate on all the text. So it's a cherry picking exercise, but it's so, so necessary. Uh, for instance, for another person with visual impairment, we found that just changing settings actually help that person on the operating system. So it's having this wider view and this focus view, the wider view to take in what kind of operating systems you can change. You know, like I've just shown you, there's other aspects of the iPad we could bring in, like voice control, which is brilliant, absolutely superb. Um, but also you can then look at the, the really nitty gritty of the package because you don't need all the tools. In fact, I have seen people switch on all the tools, absolute chaos. It totally stops you from doing what you want to do. In other words, horses for courses or getting the right tool in the right place. Thank you, Miles. We have another question from Isabel Reed. And so is there evidence that the DSA is increasingly steering HE, HE students in the direction of Office 365 rather than providing them with paid for software? I hear what you're saying. <laughs> the political ball game. Um, actually, it's much bigger than that. Um, certainly, there is a that there, there is more pressure to have a standard package, which we in the profession would fight against tooth and nail. Sadly, you might get a standard bundle, um, uh, but the, the access to work seems to be, I would say, over generous. It, it's gone the other direction. The DSA side has coalesced and the professionals are being squeezed. And, you know, really, they haven't smelt the coffee. So I think behind your question is something you may be experiencing, which is the huge lag between getting your, between actually applying and getting it sorted. And certainly behind the scenes, there's been a lot going on. And I know it's going into regional areas for this, and there's gonna be less people around. It's not good news because we need people who understand the tech in order to make it work. And, you know, it, there is a drive to using Office 365. I equate it to um, cars. The Office 365 is the mini, but I've alluded to and explained that if you want to do more, then the, the Rolls Royce is the setting. For a lot of people, the mini is suitable, maybe as a starter, but if they want to do more, they might have to go to the Rolls-Royce, the specialist software like Dragon Dictate, which costs three figures. So yeah, the, you're absolutely right. It's going to be increasingly difficult in the current financial climate, but we are fighting your corner at Barter. We're trying to make that work in the best possible way, understanding how it works, that one size does not fit all. Thank you, Miles. We've got another couple of questions for you. Uh, I'll start with uh, Angela Higgs, who is uh, latest. So Gleam says it is £99 for a year, and Angela is asking if there is a free version available. Sadly, no. No, there is no free version. Um, there was a forerunner called Sonocent, um, which isn't as good as Gleam but you could actually use the app on there. Um, it's because uh, subscription services, um, I know it's a bit of a bugbear, particularly in education when we don't know how long the funding goes, but also in the real world, sometimes you get a light version of things, but not in this instance with Glean. So I'm sorry, that's the bad news with that one. Thanks. Thank you, Miles. Uh, 
Richard is asking, sending another question in. And it reads, what is the best way to get access to work? As I've heard very hard, it's very hard to apply for a person with dyslexia. And can we get support to make sure that to get the funding through the application? Yeah, I, it sounds to me as I know form filling is not the delight of the world. Um, it, 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 it's not so much the form filling, but the actual um, getting the interview. Uh, and get, But it is happening and lots of people are applying. So when did you do this? Is it recent? Is my question. Um, I, I would ask, have a question, talk to my colleagues at Dyslexia Box and, and see what they say. And uh, they might be able to help you with that. I'll put their website down here in the in the chat window to see if that will help you. So dyslexia box. Oh, it shouldn't be dyslexia box pops. It should be dyslexia box. So sorry about that. I'll try again. Sorry. Um, so Miles, I'm just going to ask a question, maybe. Maybe on, on, on sort of on what Richard has been saying. So if if you're finding yourself needing support for these kind of applications, is it a good idea to get in touch with dyslexia charities and see what yes. they can provide? Yeah, those that have got experience of doing it, even the companies that are assessing, um, that, that's yeah. really helpful so that you get the best picture. Um, yeah, do, we are here to help, I think, is the answer as professionals. So, you know, even with I, right, helping you write the applications. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Richard. And thanks everyone for sending in questions. Um, if you've got any more, please do send them in. We're, we are open to staying on for a little bit longer if there's any anything that might pop up. Um, I think there's one from Irene regarding is, yeah. as, an, as an employer. Uh, you, so does providing not providing um assistive tech as an employer come under the discrimination act well you couldn't you couldn't apply it to tech specifically but if the organization is not supporting you and the company's not supporting you uh, and you've declared your disability then it, it can come under the discrimination act but in terms of the experience we've had in in the support group sometimes it takes quite a while to get the tech in place so the best thing you can do for yourself is if, if you want the support and you're happy to disclose your disability is to make sure as soon as you take on a role that you declare that and you also uh, know what what tech you need or you insist that you go through a workplace assessment where you'll be able to um understand what technology you need and then communicate that to your employer or go through an organization such as Mars organization um, where they can support you to understand what tech you you need as well um. thank you Bill. so I'm just going to give it a few more minutes to see if anyone has got any any more questions? While you're doing that, I'll just uh, show one more tech that we've had in education for a while, yeah, um, yes. which is making a big difference to pupils, this little thing called a scanning pen. Um, this is from scanningpens.co.uk. Sorry, it gets blurred out while I've got background here. There we are. No, right. OK, good. got the right position. And uh, Basically, this is a portable scanner. It fits in your pocket, carry it around anywhere. That decodes text and also gives definitions of words to help. So just mention that as part of the tech here. Yeah, we'll put that one down um, on the chat for the, those who are interested in exploring them. I see Caroline folks on the call. Hi, Caroline. I know you. We're local. <laughs> She's one of the good eggs in the BDA world. Give her a shout out. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> Lovely. Great. Shall we uh, 
complete then, do you know? Yeah, I think I think we've given enough time. People have asked the questions. I think. Uh, yeah, I think we can complete now the webinar. Well, thank you again, Miles. We really appreciate you coming and giving us uh, all that wonderful information. Um, just to reiterate, the information will be available on on our website, and we will be sending a link to the, to the slides and a recording of the webinar, which Miles has kindly said that we can put up on our website as well, so we can share the information. Again, once you get the link, if there's anyone else who might be interested in it, please do share. And uh, thank you once again to Nuno who uh, put all of this webinar together for you. So thank you both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for inviting me. It's been a joy. Thank you. Thank you all. And well, we'll see you next time in a couple of months. So thank you again, Miles and Philippa. Yes, and I think well, one more thing, you know, do we have an event, a London based event uh, on, I believe, the 23rd of February? Yes. Um, so, um, I mean, for those who are still around and based in London, we're just running a dyslexia health and well-being series through art and um we're going to have an in-person event on february the 23rd we had a confirmation and it will be for a pottery um taster class so for those interested uh we'll have all of our details on our website and on our social media we'll put those links in um in the chat as well uh, if that's okay philip we can just yeah, and we can send. We'll send you a link when we send out the, uh, the email with all the other links on. So if yeah. anyone's interested in in art and wellbeing and lives in London, then you can join some of our in person events as well that we're running. Um, and uh, we'll keep in touch about our next webinar as well yeah. in a couple of months. Yeah. There you. will be limited spaces for the pottery session, as I was told, because obviously it's uh, smaller. It's like a studio. Um, so I. Yeah, it'll be on the first come, first served, so just keep an eye out. Right. So again, everybody, thank you so much. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.